Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of the game out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So you can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seal line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, a Shalom. It's your brother Halak here from the GMS Denver camp, coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And in this lesson... I want to go into uh, the chapter of Romans 4. We're just going to read through it. And uh, this is part of my reading today. And this just shows, man, how we're justified. You see, you still got camps out here spewing the nonsense of the madness, talking about we're justified in the laws and that it's impossible for us to be. First and foremost, we're in the flesh, which is subject to sin. All it wants to do is rebel against the Most High. It tells you even a wicked thought, a foolish thought, you see, it's sin before the Most High. And we have those all the time. And there is no way that we could possibly be justified by the law. And this is why the Heavenly Father gave us Yahweh Shah. So we can be justified in His Son through faith. You see, that's what justifies us, man. You see, there is nothing that you can do in the sight of the Most High to be justified by the works of the law. Matter of fact, matter of fact, we're going to start right here in Ephesians Two and eight, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. You see that? By great for by grace are ye saved through faith, not through the works of the law. Now we understand and know the law of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is is the ultimate perfect law, is what causes life to flourish, and this is what we're gonna rule the earth uh by once we're in power. But right now it is impossible for us to live. In perfection of the law. First, once again, because we're in this wicked, sinful flesh. And two, we're in captivity under the under the wicked. Who's erected a society based and founded upon what? Rebelling against the Most High. Every aspect of the society causes you to be in rebellion against the Most High. So it's impossible for us to be justified by the works of the law. It's by faith, you see. The grace of the Most High working in us. We're saved through faith, man. It says, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of the Most High. So everything that we do on behalf of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah is all of him. It's his spirit working in us, moving us to believe. You see, and to show our belief by our actions. To show our, by, our belief by offering up the sacrifices of, of our lips, which are well-pleasing in the sight of the Most High. You see, by a hey, giving the true understanding of what's written. Right? Verse 9 says what? Not of works, lest any man should boast. And, and, and that's what you have some guys talking about there. there. The, the laws, the laws, the laws. Man, no, the law condemns every single Israelite on the planet Earth. We're all condemned if, if, if we're going to be uh, justified by the law. We, we're done. So once again, this is why the Heavenly Father gave us our Lord Yahweh Shah. Now I want to go into this Romans 4 and show you. How our forefather Abraham was justified through his belief in the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And the thing is, this is how we're justified. You see, there's no other way for us to be justified in the sight of the Most High outside of faith, man. So this is Romans chapter 1, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 4 verse 1, it says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he had what of to glory, but not before the Most High. You see that? So the Most High is taking that ability away from us to, to, to brag and boast about how perfect, we in the, how perfect we are in the law. You see, by setting up Esau to rule in wickedness. By putting us in this flesh. It tells us in Romans uh, chapter 8 that the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly. Matter of fact, let's get it real quick. Let's get Romans 8, right? 
And that's 20. Yep. Romans 8 and 20 says, What well, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. So we've been sub made subject to sin, man. This is how the Most High has programmed us to be. So we can be justified through what? So we can be subject unto what? Subject unto hope. Prisoners of hope, which goes into faith. Because that's how the Most High is going to save us. Through our faith in our Lord Yahweh Shai is what's going to justify us when it's all said and done. And it's not of us. It's all of Yahweh Shai. And that's why we have to say the water every day. Because us believing upon this doctrine, us who have the wisdom not to understand and be able to teach, it's not of us. We have no say so on the matter, man. This is all of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You see? But there it is. We've been subject to sin, man. It, it, there is no way around it. The only way we're going to be taken from this condition is what? When Yahweh Shah returns to deliver us and brings us into the fullness of the second covenant. And that's when we'll be perfect in the law. But not before. Now it goes on to say, let's go back. Or Romans chapter 1 and 3, it says, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed the Most High, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You see that? Because all the Most High told Abraham said, Look up. You see these? I'm going to make your seed as, uh, as the stars of heaven in multitude. And Abraham believed it. And that was what? Faith. And the most high that he was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. And guess what that did? That justified Abraham. That made Abraham righteous in the sight of the most high. Just believing. And this is before Abraham even had a seed. You see? That seed being Isaac. The seed of promise. The most high told him, hey, I'm going to make your seed as the stars of heaven for multiple. Abraham was like, all right, cool, let's do it. I believe you. And that was counted unto him for righteousness, man, because of his belief. It's the same thing with us. Believing upon this doctrine, moving in the spirit, trusting Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, that's what makes us righteous, man. Trusting in our Lord Yahweh Shah, that's what makes us righteous. Believing. You see? Verse 4 says what? Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessings of the man unto whom the Most High putteth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not unput sin. And this has been ordained from the beginning. It's already been ordained who's going to have faith, who's going to move in the proper spirit. The Most High has already ordained all these works in us from the beginning, we believe in Yahweh Shah's because the Most High allows us to. We do this work because the Most High allows us to. You see? <laughs> we're hoping that we're a part of that number to what, not have our sins and put it unto us. But it's all of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But we move in that spirit of faith in hopes to be a part of that number. You see? It goes on to say, verse 9, Come of this blessedness, then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? And it, well, it goes on to say, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Because, yeah, Abraham believed before he was even sacrificed. Oh, sacrificed. Before he was even circumcised. You see? He believed before he was even circumcised, man. So that blessings came upon him, uh, upon him, even before the circumcision. And that was going to be a, a, a prelude or uh, uh, how we're going to be justified in this time. Because before we came into the, uh, before we heard this truth, we weren't keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. We were not here keeping the righteous ways of the Most High. You see, we we heard the prophets. Then we believe, and that justified us in the sight of the Most High. Just like Abraham before us. Before we knew anything about the laws, that is the commandments, we heard the prophets preaching the gospel. 
We heard it and believed. And that's, hey, just like Abraham did, man. You see? Now it goes on to say, verse uh, 11, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. You see that? Because look, once again, we weren't keeping the laws, man. We was out here doing all manner of wickedness. You see? Worshiping idols, eating abominable meat, committing adultery, doing all manner of wickedness, man. But we heard this gospel and we believed upon it. You see? And it was put it unto us for righteousness, just like our forefather Abraham before us. And may Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah allow us to continue in that spirit of faith. You see? Now it goes on to say, verse 12, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he, being, which he had being yet uncircumcised. You see, so we believe before we even put anything to action. Before we ate, we, we heard the gospel and guess what? We believed upon it and then that, that we started to do what? We started putting off all the abominable meat. We started, ate, started to leave off from all the wicked holidays and the worshiping of idols. After we heard, after we believed on the gospel. We believed first and then we started doing, you know, putting forth, uh, uh, doing the actions. Of trying to keep the law to the best of our ability. You see? But we believed first. That's what it's all about, that faith, man. Because you didn't come into the truth because you were keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh You came into the truth because you heard the gospel and believed upon it. You see? And through that faith that you exhibited, you started to move in the proper way. You see? You started to what? Try to uphold the ways of the Most High as best you can. Ain't knowing and understanding that it's, it is the right way. You did all that out of, out of faith, man. <laughs> now it goes on to say, verse 13, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith, through our believing of it. What do you think we're doing? We're we going through all these scriptures. Reading through all the blessings, reading all the, all the prophecies, the promises, everything the Most High has laid out to come to pass. And we believe upon all of it, man. Now, we know and understand that the end game is what? For us to be perfected under the second covenant. And that's when we'll live in the fullness of the law, keeping it in perfection. But, but hey, until then, we got to move our faith, man. We have to move our faith as Abraham, as Abraham did before us. We don't, we, we don't see these things. We, 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 we haven't seen all the things that the Most High has promised, but we know they're going to happen. We know it's going to come to pass, just like everything else the Most High has ever said. I did a series a while ago called The Most High's Track Record is Impeccable. You can go through the history. That's why it tells you Romans 15 real quick. Romans 15 and 4 tells us what? For, the, for whatsoever things that were written aforetime were written through our learning that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Because we believe that all these things that we read that happened before time are true, that they actually happen. And it's all through what? Faith, which is a gift from the Most High. The same gift uh, for, uh, uh, the Most High gave our forefather Abraham, man. You see, all we do is all through faith. And this is why people, they can't really understand what we're doing. It's because it's not something tangible, something that you could touch. You see? It's not something that you could just see. See, we're looking, we're looking into the future. We know what it's going to be according to the Most High's will. Has it come to pass yet? Nah. But we see all the signs telling us that everything the Most High said is, is about to happen. That's faith, man. Which everyone doesn't have. So we we are, we find ourselves uh, in a blessed position. We find ourselves in, in great company. You see? Verse 14 tells us what? For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law work of wrath, 
For where no law is, there is no transgression. And that's what Yahweh Shah took from us. He took us from under the, the, the uh, that, that standard of the first covenant of having to uphold the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly because that's what you have to do. Even James tells us that if you you offend in one point of the law, you offend in all because the laws of the Most High were meant to be kept in perfection. Not half ass, not to, not to the best of your ability, even though that's what we try to do. That's why that's why we say you can never be justified according to that first covenant standard, especially in this flesh and especially in this captivity, man. So that's why we have to be changed. That's why we have faith that when Yahweh Shah returns, he is going to change us. He is going to make us as he is. And it tells you if you have that hope in you, you, a, you what you make yourself pure. Once again, it all goes back to what? It all goes back to that faith that we've been blessed with. Now, Romans fifteen, uh, uh, Romans four and fifteen tells us, because the law worketh for wrath, for when for where no law is, there is no transgression. Exactly. And this is the time. This is what we're living in now. That time of grace, where the Most High is working in us to do the works, is do do His works to offer up these sacrifices to to believe. It also tells us that what if we if we are any Yahusha, oh man, what uh, what is it? Oh, it tells us that there is no condemnation to those who are in Yahusha, and how you in Yahusha through faith, through belief, through being obedient to the Most High's will, and you do all of that out of faith. So if we be a part of that number, as we say, the hopeful elect. We have no transgression. You see. Now, if we if 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 you want to try to live according to that 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 the fullness of that first covenant, you have nothing but wrath to look forward to, man, because you can't do it. The clothes you wear in the mixed fabric, you don't know what the fuck is in your food. You see, <laughs> you go to these different restaurants; they're cooking all type of abominable things on on these on these stoves, on the, in these pots and pans. You have no place to put your woman when she's on her period. You see. Unless you just got it like that. If you got mildew in your house and it keeps coming back, you have to tear your whole house down and rebuild. Who has the who has the resources to do that <laughs> in captivity? What if you got if you live in an apartment? What if the what if a part of the apartment or complex has mold in? You have to tear that whole shit down and rebuild. Who ha who has the means to do that? So if you want to live according to that first standard, man, you 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 cooked. You have nothing but wrath to look forward to because you have to be perfect in it. And this is what a lot of these Israelites fail to understand. You cannot be perfect in the law because if that was the case, we wouldn't need a, a second covenant. We wouldn't need Yahweh to come down and be a sacrifice for us if we could be perfect according to the first standard, according to the first covenant. You see. Verse 16 says what? Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, all the seed. You see, beginning with the elect, that shows you that eventually, even though uh, two thirds are going to be destroyed on this side, they're going to partake in this promise as well. They're not going to be somewhere up under the earth burning forever. As you have some groups uh, teaching now that Roman Catholic bullshit. All the seed is going to be eventually in the kingdom of heaven. But it begins with the elect who are moving in the spirit of faith. And through that elect remnant, those, those who the Most High is blessed with faith, the rest of the nation is going to be brought into this. You see? So it says what? Romans 4 and 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Not talking about all the world, but all of Israel. The seed goes from, from what Abraham to Isaac and Jacob. The Christians, the, these, these anti-Messiahs will read this and things it's talking about all people know. The most I told you, and, and Isaac shall thy seed be called. And who did Isaac bring forth? Jacob and Esau. Who was chosen out of Jacob and Esau? Jacob was. That's who Abraham is the father of. You see, and only a small number of that seed has been blessed with the gift of faith as our forefather Abraham before us. Now, verse 17 tells us what? 
As it is written, I have made thee I have made thee a father of many nations, which are the Israelites, the twelve tribes, before him whom he believed, even the Most High, who quickened of the dead and called of those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. Because once again, when the Most High made that promise to Abraham that this seed was gonna be as the stars of heaven, he had he, Isaac wasn't even born yet. And he still believed on it with great fervency, man. He didn't doubt. He didn't waver. He didn't, oh, man, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, he wasn't in that spirit, man. He just believed. And you see that example of our righteous forefathers believing all throughout the scriptures. That's why the Most High gave us those different accounts. Because we're coming into a time, man, it's going to, hey, shit. We're going to have to have massive amounts of faith. Even though when it looked dire and bleak and like there's no way out, we, we, we still going to have to believe. And this is why we're constantly going into the scriptures, reading these different promises the Most High made, going into the Comforter and actually being comforted by what's written. How the Most High is going to uphold us and protect us and deliver us in the time of trouble. That's what was promised. And it's all going to happen through your what? Through your faith. You see that you've been gathering for a treasure. It's all about faith, man. A, a whole chapter, Hebrews 11. The entire chapter is about faith and that it's impossible to please the Most High without it. So the Most High wants us to believe. He wants us to be in a fervent spirit, being bold and, and, and courageous and, and brave when it comes to, to believing on him. When it comes to believing in his son, Yahweh Shai, he wants us to trust wholeheartedly. This is why we've been in the spirit of what? Doing his work in, in, in truth and sincerity, man. Praying, fasting. <laughs> You see, we're doing all these things out of what? Out of faith. Of hopes. And, and, and hopes of being what? Protected and delivered when all hell is breaking loose out here. It's all about faith, man. Faith is what's going to uh, uh, fuel the miracles. You see, when, when famine is, is, is uh, wiping people wiping people out left and right, your faith in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah is what's going to cause you to be fed. If you don't believe that the most I can work a miracle in the time of famine, guess what? Ain't no miracle going to be worth for you. You already got guys like uh, one body talking about, ain't no miracles. Ain't no miracles coming. What the, What do you mean? See, the most I ain't dealing with a group like that, man. Because they're not moving in faith. This is the most important thing, man. And you got guys mocking this. Someone with faith-based Israelites, duh. <laughs> that's, that's the requirement. You see? That's what's going to cause the kingdom of heaven being ushered in, the faith of the elect. What's going to cause the elect to be delivered? Their faith. Protected when all hell is breaking loose, their faith. You see? Being delivered from this nuclear destruction that's coming, that's that's fastly approaching. Their faith is what's going to cause them to, to be delivered. That's what most high, that's that's what Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah requires. Us to believe and have faith. You see, Salakia, <laughs> Romans 4 and 18 says what? Who against hope believed in hope and that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be according to that which was spoken. You see that? He believed according to that which is spoken. And we're required to do the same thing, man. You see, verse 19 tells us what? And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't let that, his condition stop him from believing. He didn't let the fact that he was already past age, he probably didn't think he, his, his seed was still flowing as it was when he was younger. And you, you know, like, damn, Sarah, 99, man, I don't that, that shit got down. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Her seeds ain't as strong as they were when they were, when, when she was younger. But guess what? That, that's where that that's where that faith comes in, because you gotta understand and know that nothing is impossible for you. How about Shemiah was shot, man? This is what a lot of guys don't understand. There's nothing impossible for our power. He can he can do anything. This is this is the most high's world, man. This is the most high's creation. Everything in it. And now he's giving that power over to his son. So Yahweh Shah has that same power. 
to do whatever he pleases through the spirit and power of the heavenly father Yahweh. So was it, is, is Abraham crazy for believing that he could have a child at, at 100 and, and his, his wife being 99? Nah, no, he believed, like shit, the most I say, the most I said it, it's going to be done. This is the type of spirit that we have to take in this time of Jacob's trouble that's coming, man. The most shit, well, you know what? I, I, ain't, I can't fear. The most I said he was going to uphold me, he was going to feed me, he was going to take care of me. They, I was going to be in league with the beast of the earth. I don't have to worry about none of this. All of our enemies that can come up against us, the most I say he's going to lay them down. I believe that wholeheartedly. So let's move with a bold and courageous spirit. Hey, like Jude, hey, what did Judas Maccabee do before they went into battle? He, he, he bought back a what? An account of the most high working miracles on behalf of our forefathers. You see that? And that lifted the morale and the, and, and the spirits of his men. And they, and what? They got in that spirit of what? Having faith. And they got the victory. This is what this is how we have to move. You see? Cause shit is about to get real out here. And, and you need and what you need to be doing is working on your personal relationship with the most high. Whether that cause you to have to do a fast every week, you praying more, you reading more. You, we gotta build up our relationship with the most high, cause ain't no ain't no telling where we're gonna be when shit pops off. You can be by yourself. Now what are you gonna do? You can't lean on another brother's uh Faith that he's been building to get you through. That's why you got to do it on your own. <laughs> you see? So you can move with great confidence like our forefather Abraham did. You see, when the most I came to him. Right? Now Romans 4 and 20 says what? He staggered not at the promise of the most I through unbelief. And everything that we're reading in these scriptures is what the most I has promised to do for the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is us. Those that believe. He's promised to do these things, man. So we cannot stagger or get in that doubtful spirit. That man, I don't know, man. I I don't know. We can't be in that spirit. The most I say he was gonna take care of us, he was gonna help us. That's what it's gonna be. That's what it's gonna be. Now, is it gonna be scary? Of course. <laughs> Cause we are still in the flesh. But what did the most I say? Did he not say he was going to pull us through this thing, man? Yes or no? So that's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. We don't need that. Look, man, our enemies are going to lose. That's how the most I has this thing about to play out. Yeah, it's going to be some crazy shit we're about to witness in our, with our eyes. But we know and understand according to, to, to what's written, according to what the most I has spoken, how this entire thing plays out. Our enemies losing, Lord, wouldn't we be a part of that elect number? We're going to get the victory, man. Some of us might be beheaded. Some of us are going to be thrown into prison. Yeah, that, that's prophecy. It has to be fulfilled. But it's okay because we still get the victory regardless as long as we continue to do what? Keep our faith, man. You see that? So Romans 4 and 20. Let our forefather Abraham be an example, man. Romans 4 and 20. He staggered not at the promise of the Most High through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to the Most High, and being fully persuaded. There it is, and being fully persuaded. You have to be fully persuaded, man. Can't a hey, can't nobody be fully persuaded for you. You have to know for sure that the Most High is going to do exactly what He promised to do, man. You have to be fully persuaded, and that's the spirit our forefather Abraham moved in. Romans 4 and 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. What do you think we're doing when we're going through these scriptures, man? We're, we're reading what the Most High has promised to bring to pass. We're reading what the Most High has promised to do for those who serve him. You see? And he's going to perform it. He's not going to let us down, man. He's not going to let us down. Trust and believe. No matter what you may see in front of you, no matter how your flesh may feel, the Most High has promised, and He's going to do it. I, and I truly believe that. Is it going to be rough? Yes. Is it going to be tough? Yes. Are we going to go into to the kingdom of heaven with great tribulation? Yes, we are. But the Most High told us, don't worry about it. He was going to pull us through it. He was going to strengthen us. He was going to uphold us. You see, He was going to help us. Through His Son, Yahweh Shai. And I believe that, man. So Romans 4 and 21, it says, 
and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was inputted to him for righteousness. There it is. That's what makes you righteous. <laughs> Believing in the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, which ultimately goes back to our Lord Yahweh Shah, you see? But that's what makes us righteous. Believing on what the Most High has promised to do through his son Yahweh Shah is what's, and that's what makes us righteous. Not the keeping of the law, because you can never be righteous according to that first covenant standard, man. This is why we need a second covenant. You see? Verse 23 says what? Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was inputted to him, but for us also to whom it shall be inputted, if we if we believe on him that raised up Yahweh Shah our Lord from the dead. There it is. There it is. Abraham is our example of moving in faith. He believed upon the word of the Most High. It was put unto him for righteousness. And guess what? It's required for us to believe upon what the Most High has spoken. And it would be put unto us for righteousness. You see? Ain't no need. Ain't no. Look, man, this is not the time for doubting. This is not the time for that faithlessness, man. That unbelief. That's what got the first generation. That's what got their ass left in the wilderness, man. You see, just believe. And if your faith is weak, pray for the pray to the Most High for more faith, more strength, to be able to trust more. These what you this, these are the things you should be asking uh, uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah for, man. And he'll give it to you. Trust and believe he will. But this is how we have to move, man. See, these other camps are setting themselves up for failure. Talking about the perfection in the law. <laughs> They're, hey, they're about to be miserable out here. You see? So Romans 4 and 24 says, But for us also to whom it shall be inputted, if we believe on him that raised up Yahweh our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for all offenses. What offenses? The offenses we committed by breaking that first covenant. Why? Because we couldn't be perfect according to that first covenant standard. So this is why we needed our Lord Yahweh Shah to come and be a sacrifice. That, that that shows you right there. It can't be done according to the law, man. If it could, Yahweh Shah wouldn't have had to come and suffer what he suffered. He wouldn't have had to be delivered up for our offenses because if we could be perfect according to that first covenant standard, there would have been no offenses. This is why there is a second covenant that's about to be established with the nation of Israel. To make us perfect. To give us those what? Immortal bodies. Those righteous bodies. That long to just do what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has commanded us to do. But right now, that ain't the case, man. We have to be saved from this flesh. And that salvation comes through what? Belief in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So Romans 4 and 25 says what? Who was delivered for all offenses and was raised again for our justification. He was raised again for our justification. You see? How are you justified? By believing on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You see? You, you are justified through faith in Yahweh Shah. Through faith are we justified, man. Not through the works of the law. You see? Now we are a... We establish the law. We understand and know that the law is what's going to be the the, uh, the law of the land in the kingdom of heaven. But right now, we're justified through faith. Justified through faith. Believe in Yahweh Shah, man. You see, because he, he is who justifies us. And, and, that, and that's how the Heavenly Father has it set up to be. Yahweh Shah is our justification. So believe in that. And if you do, it'll be unputted unto you for righteousness, just like it was with our Lord, our forefather Abraham before us, man. You see? So I just wanted to bring it out real quick, man. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, and the sincere peace and salutation. To all you hopeful to let Akiyam out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba.